Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at the Mueller mod for Roll20. And this mod allows you to easily set and retrieve variable values. And to help us illustrate this, we're going to look at three different examples. Our first example will display a different message in chat depending upon which character token is currently selected. Our next example will allow us to make rolls on tables that have ranges, like the one you see on the left side of my screen right now. And our final example will allow us to perform level-based calculations, so we'll be able to easily determine how my druid's Halo of Spores damage die will scale in power as she levels up. Now, because we're using mods, a pro account will be required in order to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So the first thing we want to do is install the Metascript toolbox into our game. This comes to us from the Metamancer himself, Timma, and when you install the Metascript toolbox, you're going to get a bunch of mods installed into your game. You're going to get things like Mueller, Select Manager, Plugger, Zero Frame, and several others. Just take them all, we're going to use several of them throughout the course of this video. I'm also going to use the Script Cards mod from Kurt Jagers to help illustrate some of the concepts here too. Once you've got those installed, we can jump back into our game. So let's start with our first example where we want to display a message in chat depending upon which character is selected. And let's start out by looking at Yidra, my Circle of Spores druid. If I open up Yidra's character sheet, on the Attributes and Abilities tab, you'll see that I have an ability called Quotes. And if I open up quotes, you'll see that we have three different quotes. She has a battle cry, she has a snarky comment, and she has a lament. So let's say I want to retrieve the snarky comment. The way that we would do that is with syntax that looks like this, where we say get, this is Mueller retrieving a value, Yidra, that's the name of the character sheet that we are retrieving from, quotes is the ability on that character sheet, and then snark, which is the key here that we want to retrieve for. So I want to get this sentence that says, you look good dead. As you can tell, Yidra is a people person. Now, if I were to take this and run it directly in Roll20, you're going to see that nothing actually happens. That's because Metascripts need to work in conjunction with other scripts. So what I'm going to do is put an exclamation point at the very front of this line, and then I'm also going to add this simple tag at the end of it. This simple tag comes from zero frame. And what this is going to do now is read the value of snark and display it in chat. So if I run this now, we can see that it says, you look good dead. And if I wanted to change this to be the battle cry, I can do that. We'll just copy and paste this again. And there you go. This is how the basic syntax of Mueller works. But Nick, you say... You said that we were going to be able to have different text displayed depending upon which character was currently selected. How does that work? So glad you asked. Let's see how that works now. So what we can do is modify this line and replace the name of the character with this tag saying at selected character name. And now we're going to have Roll20 look to see which token is currently selected and substitute that for this bit right here. So if I have Yidra selected and I run this command, we're going to get Yidra's battle cry, which is Rotten Damnation. If I select my halfling Jolo and I run that same command, it says I'll stir fry you because Jolo has his own quotes ability on his character sheet. So what I can do now is have quotes on each one of my party members. And as long as I keep the structure the same here, where everyone has a battle cry, a snark, and lament, I'll be able to reuse this same line of code for each one of them. And the quote that's displayed will change depending upon who's currently selected. So now let's take a look at the example I showed at the beginning of the video with that Obsidian MacGuffin attack, where Jolo wields the Obsidian MacGuffin, and he says, now that's cooking with gas. If I have Yidra selected, and I run that same macro, she says her snarky remark. So let's see the code for this. And that code looks like this. We're using script cards here. And as you can see, the title is Obsidian MacGuffin. We're making an attack roll with a d20. We're doing 2d6 damage. And we display that here and here. 
we're putting out a message saying that the selected character name is wielding the obsidian MacGuffin. And then we create a variable right here called message. And we start out by setting message equal to the snark quote. But if our attack roll is a nat 20, we want to display our battle cry instead. Or if we get a nat 1, then we want to display our lament. So we're retrieving a different quote, not only depending on which character that we're working with, but on what our die roll was as well. Now our next example is going to be to see how to use Mueller to make rolls on tables that have ranges in them. So on screen, I have the exploration table from Acquisitions Incorporated. One of your franchise's downtime activities is to go out and explore uncharted territory. So one of the characters makes a survival check, and depending upon the result of the check, you see what you discover. You may find a major threat, you may find a natural feature like a river or a mountain range, or you may find an ally or a helpful monster that's going to be beneficial to your franchise somehow. Thing is, there isn't a really great way to handle this with Roll20's native rollable tables, but we can do this with Mueller. Let's see how. So the first thing I've done is created a character sheet called Franchise Sheet. And on that character sheet, I created an ability called Exploration Discoveries. And if we open this up, you can see that I've got 1 to 5 is a major threat, 6 to 10 is a minor threat, and so on. I've mimicked out the entries that are in the Exploration Discoveries table that you see here. So now what I can do is use Mueller to make a roll against this ability and then get my results and display that out to my players. Now one important thing to mention is that you need to have control of any character sheet that you want to mule from. And previously that wasn't a big deal because Yidra's player would automatically have control over Yidra's character sheet and would be able to retrieve from that. But here we've got a common character sheet. This is not assigned to any one particular player. So we want to make sure that all the players who are going to want to roll off of this sheet can access it. And to do that, just go into edit here and set it to all players under can be edited and controlled by. It doesn't have to be in their journals, so it won't clutter that up, but they do need to have control over it. And then one last safety tip is that when you've entered in all of the information into your ability, make sure that you save and close it before you try to write code against it. And that way you're just going to make sure that all the information has been saved properly. All right, so let's minimize our character sheet, bring back our trusty notepad window here, and let's take a look at the syntax to retrieve one of these values. So it's going to look very similar to what we saw earlier. I'm going to bring in another Mueller and zero frame command. So what we're saying here is get the franchise sheet and the name of the ability on the character sheet that we're working with is exploration discoveries. And then here I'm specifically saying the number three. So what that's going to do is retrieve major threat. Now you'll notice there is no number three in this. It's just one to five. So what Mueller is going to do is take the number that was provided and see where it falls in these ranges. And so we're seeing, all right, number three, we should retrieve major threat. So let's go ahead. Let's run this command right here. Throw it into chat, paste, and there we go, major threat. If I change it to a 27 and run this same command, we should get ally or useful monster, which... Yes, that's exactly what that is. So this allows us to easily get a value from a range. So now you might be thinking, well, that's great if I've got a static value I want to pull from, Nick, if I always want to pull 27, but how do I actually make this into a die roll? Let's see how to do that now. So what I'm going to do is come down to my line here, and I'm going to change the hard-coded 27, and I'm going to put in the syntax for an inline roll. So let's do 1d20. And then we're also going to add this dot value to the end of it. And now when I run this command, it's going to roll a d20, take the value that we got from that d20, and look up the corresponding value on our table. So let's copy this and run it. And we got natural feature. You can also add modifiers to this die roll by encapsulating them in another set of square brackets. So if I wanted to add Yidra's survival bonus into this equation, what I would do is put in another set of square brackets here, one, two, and then one, two, and then between those, we would add in our survival bonus, which is gonna look like this. 
and let's make this a little bit wider so it's easier to see. Okay, so we've got our D20, which we're adding to our survival bonus. We're making that whole thing a roll and then getting the value of it. So if I run this, we got a minor threat. But now you may be wondering how to see what the die roll actually was. And we can do that too. If we go to the end of the get statement here, we can put in a dollar sign and then two sets of square brackets and then we'll put in the number one here. And if I run it like this, we can see that we rolled a six and that is a minor threat. And if I run this again, we rolled a 14, which is no discovery of note. Now you may be wondering what this dollar sign double bracket number notation is all about. That's called a roll marker. And anytime roll 20 rolls a die, it stores the results of that die in a roll marker. Now these roll markers are zero based, meaning that the first die roll you make is roll marker zero. The second die roll that you make is roll marker one and so on. In our example here, the initial D20 roll is roll marker zero. And then the D20 plus the survival bonus is roll marker one. And so that's what we're grabbing here is that roll marker one, which has the output of the D20 plus the survival bonus. So earlier you saw me run this macro, which displays what we rolled and what we discovered. Let's take a look at the code for that. Code for that looks like this. We start out with our script. Our title is Explore Territory, as you can see. Then we're making our check test. So this is our role, which is that same role that you saw earlier where we do the D20 plus the selected character's survival bonus. Then we display what we rolled. And then the discovery, we're doing our get against the franchise sheet, against the exploration discovery's ability. And we're using that role marker just like we saw previously. We're getting that. And then we're saying, you discovered whatever it was. So here we rolled a 10. We discovered a minor threat. Now, if you're familiar with script cards, you may be looking at my code and going, Nick, why didn't you just use the check test variable that you created? Why are you using the role marker? The answer to this is actually really involved and will be the subject of a whole other video that I'm planning for later on. But suffice it to say that it has to do with how items execute within Roll20. So the native Roll20 die roll engine happens, then the metamods fire, and then regular scripts fire. What that means is the die roll happens, but the assignment of the script card variable doesn't happen until after the metamod has fired, until after Mueller has tried to retrieve something. So if we tried to use the script card variable, we would get an error message from Mueller because that variable technically doesn't exist yet. But the role and the role marker do exist because they fire first. And so we're passing the role marker into Mueller to get that information and then render that in the script card. So Mueller gives you a really easy way to work with tables that have ranges in them. So our last scenario will show how we can use Mueller to calculate how a damage die should scale based on a character's level. And I'm using the Circle of Spores Druid as my example here. At level two, the Circle of Spores Druid gets an ability called Halo of Spores, which lets them use their reaction to deal 1d4 points of necrotic damage to a target within 10 feet of them. And then at sixth level, that increases to a d6, turns into a d8 at 10th level, and a d10 at 14th level. Now, it's possible to code this without using Mueller. In fact, I've done that in the past, and I've actually done a video on it. The code for that looks like this. The challenge here is this code is not intuitive to read. As a matter of fact, I have to go back and rewatch my own video every time I want to do something like this in the future. So Mueller allows us to take this really convoluted syntax and turn it into something like this, where we just say we are getting a value from Yidra's character sheet and the value we're getting is based on her level. So let's see how that works. Okay, so let's tuck this away and let's bring up Yidra's character sheet. And you can see that on Yidra's character sheet, I've already created an ability called Spore's Damage Scale. And so let's open that up. And you can see I've got it so that if the value is less than or equal to five, it returns 1d4. If it's six to nine, it returns a d6. 10 to 13, we get a d8. Greater than or equal to 14, we get a d10. So if we look back at our code here, we're saying get Yidra, so Yidra's character sheet, the Spore's Damage Scale ability, and then we're reading Yidra's level off of her character sheet. And then from there, 
we look to see where in the range her level lands. So if she's level 4, we're going to return a d4. If she's level 8, we're going to return a d6, and so on. So this syntax is a whole lot friendlier than this. So now we can take this and we can put it into a script card, and the code for that would look like this, where we say, okay, we've got our halo of spores, it's got a 10-foot reach, it's a reaction, and then we're just getting our damage die from Yidra's character sheet. So if we go ahead and run this, we see that we rolled a d4, and that's because Yidra is currently level 4. If I go and I level her up, okay, I've just fast-forwarded time a bit and leveled Yidra up to level 7, and now if I run this code again, we can see that we rolled a d6. So the damage die is scaling properly based on her level. And this syntax is just a whole lot easier to read than this one. One final thing I want to show is how you can use Mueller to set a value on a character sheet. So to help illustrate that, I'm looking at the Occultant from Acquisitions Incorporated, specifically their Read the Kill ability, which basically says that over the period of a minute, you can study a creature killed by someone in your franchise and then grant that character who slew it a D10. So what I want to do is store the name of the character who got the last kill in my character sheet so that I don't forget it later on. The syntax to set a variable is very similar to the get syntax. It's going to look like this. So we're setting a variable. We're looking at Yidra's character sheet. We're going to look at an ability called last kill. And within last kill, we're going to set the name property equal to whoever got the last kill. We'll actually click on their token in order to set this value. But if we look at Yidra's character sheet, if I open it up and I go to the Attributes and Abilities tab, you'll notice that there is no last kill ability right now. Mueller will create that for us. So I'm going to close my character sheet here, and I'm just going to run this command exactly as it is. Let's go ahead, we'll paste that into chat. I get the pop-up saying who got the kill. We'll click on Jolo here. And now let's open up Yidra's character sheet again and go back to the Attributes and Abilities, and we see now we have last kill, and if we open it up, Name equals Jolo. So we have successfully set a new variable value on our character sheet. One safety tip here is if the character sheet is open when you do this, so I'm going to delete this right now, and I'll say yes, delete. Okay, if I run this again, and I target Jolo again, okay, you notice that last kill doesn't show up here. I need to close the character sheet and then reopen it and that refresh will trigger, and you'll see Last Kill is now present, and it's set to Jolo. So there you have it. That's how you can use Mueller to get and set variable values in Roll20. I just want to give another quick shout-out of thanks to Tim Off for helping me wrap my head around all this, and thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.